Hello everyone. Welcome to People Swap channel. This is your host for today. My name is Samir Ranalkar and today we are continuing our People Swap procure to pay series with episode number 3. In the previous episode, we discussed about the basic concept of requisition and we discussed in detail about doing the requester setup. In today's episode, we will go ahead and create our first requisition while doing so we will understand the structure of a requisition and once the requisition has been created successfully we will see what are the database tables which are impacted when we create a requisition in peoplesoft all right so with that agenda in mind for today let's start the discussion So let's log in with VP1 who possibly has all the access in this demo environment. So to create a requisition using purchasing module, we need to go to purchasing requisitions and add update requisitions. So we need to provide the business unit here. In this case for VP1 it is coming through its user preferences and we have the default requisition ID as a next so when we give the requisition ID as a next then system will decide what should be the requisition ID for the new requisition so we have entered into the add update component of the requisition so before we proceed further and create a requisition let's understand the structure of a requisition in people swap system each requisition has these four sections so these are header line schedule and distribution so header will give you a high level information about the requisition such as who is the requester when is the requisition created what is the total amount for that requisition etc it will not give you any details such as what are you ordering or where do you want the items to be delivered etc no that's not the purpose of header it will only give you a high level information so next we have is line which will give you the information about the items or services which you are ordering and what is the quantity of that item so let's say for a given requisition you are ordering 10 different items so line will have the details about these items their unit of measure their currency their quantity etc so after line we have the third section which is the schedule section and it will contain the delivery instructions for your order so schedule will give you information about when you want your order and where do you want your order so it will have ship to address it will have due date etc and the last section we have is the distribution section so distribution section will give you the information about the payment in short it will tell you how you are going to pay for your order so these are the four section which every requisition will have in peoplesoft system now if we talk about the technical point of view of this add update requisition component then we have requisition header at level 0 and then we have line at level 1 which means for each requisition we can order one or more items or services next we have schedule at level 2 which means for each line we can have one or more schedules or one or more delivery instructions because schedule is at level 2 and finally we have distribution section which is at level 3 which means for each schedule we can have one or more distributions all right so now let's go ahead and create our first requisition 
and while creating a requisition let's understand all of these four sections so as we can see this is the header section of your requisition now at the top we can provide some requisition name because later when we search for our requisition then we may not remember the requisition id but if we have a meaningful name we may remember it and we can use that requisition name to search for our requisition so let's provide some requisition name let's call it our first ever requisition all right now we have the status as pending so this is the default status which we have configured at the requester level so this is the requester setup for vp1 and if we notice the requisition status says pending approval so we have two options open and pending approval so this status indicate when we create a new requisition then what is the default status you want so next we have this requester option so we are creating a requisition using requester vp1 and this is a requisition date which is the current date in the system so for any field if we have an asterisk mark like this then it indicates that it is a mandatory field next we have the origin which is onl in this case because we are creating a requisition online using pia and next we have the currency code which is automatically populated as usd so these values are coming by default from the requester setup as you can see for requester currency is usd so next we have this section called as requisition defaults in the sections we have some values defined such as ship to id to be us001 then we have some of the chart field values defined such as gl unit account and department and these values are populating here using the requester setup for vp1 as we can see for vp1 we have some of the chart field values already set up so we have this account 600020 and department 11000 which is showing here in the requisition defaults now when it comes to setting up the default options while creating requisitions we have two options one is default and the another one is override we will discuss about these two options in some time so let's come back so now we also have the option to add comments for your requisition so let's add some sample comments for example let's say this is my first requisition so we have added the comments at the header level remember these are the header comments for our requisition so after entering a comment we have option to display the comments at four different areas so first one it says send to supplier next one is show at the received so the third one is show at the voucher and fourth one is use these comments as an approval justification so when a requisition is sourced into a purchase order then these requisitions comments are also available in the purchase order now if we check the checkbox send to supplier then when a purchase order is dispatched to the supplier supplier will be able to see those comments which were given by the requester so if we want to provide some specific instructions for the supplier then we can check this checkbox to send these comments to supplier the second checkbox is this show at receipt checkbox so the receiving center creates a po receipt for the goods they have received so if we have checked the show at receipt checkbox for the requisition comments then these comments will be available at this receipt which the receiving center has created the third option we have is this 
show at voucher checkbox. So if we select this checkbox, then these requisition comments will be available on the voucher when we create a PO voucher in the system. And the last option we have is this approval justification checkbox. So when we submit the requisition, they have to go to the approval based upon the approval setup. So if you want to provide some approval justification to your approver, then you can check this checkbox. One important point to notice is that when you use these comments as an approval justification, then all of these other three checkbox becomes grayed out because these are comments for your approval justification. Hence, there is no need to send this to supplier or show it to voucher or show it to receipt, etc. So what if you want to use some comments to approval justification and also you want to enter a different comment which you want to be visible at voucher or receipt? Well, you can add multiple comments here. So if we click on this plus icon, it will allow you to add multiple comments. So let's say this is a comment for the supplier. And then you can send this comment to the supplier. Also, if you want to attach some specific document, such as you want to attach a specific image or PDF or any other work related document, then you can click on this attach button and that will allow you to upload a file for your document and that will allow you to attach the work related document for your requisition so let's click on ok so in the account summary we are having total amount as zero because we have not added any item yet at the line level so this will be your total amount for all the items which you have added for your requisition. So now let's go to line section of the requisition and let's add a few items. So we can add items by clicking on this magnifying glass. And then this will see all the items which are available for the requester VP1. So as we discussed in the previous episode, this is the requester setup and this is the catalog information which will control which items can the requester see in this lookup section. For now, we have given the catalog as all purchase items. Hence, these are the items which VP1 can see. So let's say VP1 wants to order this item. So as soon as we click on this item, few information automatically pops up such as the item description. If we go to supplier, this is the supplier, this is the supplier location, etc. So this information comes from the item setup. So if we want to check the item setup for this item, then we can go to items, define items and attributes and define item let's provide this item id and as we can see this is the description which we have here similarly if we go to the supplier information then we have this supplier which is selected automatically for this item so this supplier is coming from here let's go to purchasing item attributes and item supplier so this is the supplier SCM000001, which is automatically populated for our requisition. So please note that for this item, there are four suppliers which are set up. So this is supply number one, this is supply number two, three, and four. But these are different suppliers, but system is picking up these supplier bike shopper because this is active and this is set up as priority one. Similarly, if we go to attribute section, then we are having this buyer as a VP1. So again, this buyer is getting selected from the item setup. So if we go to item setup 
and if we go to purchasing attributes then in the purchasing attributes of this item we can see the primary buyer has been mentioned as vp1 so if we change the primary buyer here then the system will pick up that new buyer while creating a requisition all right so let's go back to this details tab and let's provide some quantity so let's say we want to order five quantity of this item so we have provided the quantity but we can see the price and merchandise amount is still zero so let's click on this refresh button so that the system will pull out the details from this item setup so if we click on the refresh button we can see the price is populated for this item and the price is dependent upon the unit of measure so as we can see we need to provide the unit of measure and for one item we can have multiple unit of measures set up at the item level so we can see that the price is 25 for each item and the merchandise amount is showing as 125 dollars so the merchandise amount is nothing but your price per item multiplied by the quantity so as soon as we added one item we can see at the header section the total amount is being shown as 125 usd as expected so as we discussed earlier we can add multiple lines or multiple items to our requisition so each line in the requisition indicates a unique item so if a given requisition has five lines then it means that the requisition has five unique items or services so in order to add more items let's click on this plus button it will ask for how many rows we want to add so let's say we want to add one more row let's select some item from this catalog let's say we want to add this item let's select the quantity and let's click on refresh so as we can see the other information has been populated for this item as well as our total amount has been updated as expected now we added these two items for our requisitions which are physical items so these have a nature of physical goods and for this item we also have these items set up in our system so that's why they have the item id the people's of item id but while creating requisitions we can also add services which are not set up in our system for example let's say you want a floor cleaning service for your organization now this floor cleaning is not an item which we have set up in our system like this item but it is a service which you want from the supplier so we can do that and such items are called as description only item or these are also called as services so let's add one more row so here let's add the description for our service we won't be having the item id because as we discussed this floor cleaning service is not set up so let's type the description as floor cleaning so let's select the quantity as one and let's select the uom so we have these many units of measure available so we have these many units of measure which are available in the system so let's say we are going to measure this service in terms of time so let's say the unit of measure to be hours let's provide some category let's say the category is services remember for the about two items the category was populated automatically from the item setup but since this is a service and since this is not a item setup we have to provide these values manually so let's provide the price for this service let's say the price is 100 so if we go to the attributes section and if we check the line number three 
which is a description only item then we are having the physical nature as services so based upon the information that we provided and the category which we selected the physical nature is coming up as service on the other hand the above two items are coming from the item setup and as these are the physical items we have the physical nature as goods now we have one more flag here which is called as amount only flag so if we check this flag and if we go back to details we get a warning that the quantity will be set to one for an amount only line so what happens is if we check the amount only flag for one of the line then system sets the quantity as one and it indicates that we do not care about the quantity it is going to be one but we would be caring about what is the price for this item and the price will be considered and not the quantity so that's how we can also add the services while creating requisitions we can also provide the comments at line level similar to how we provided the comments for header so let's say we want to provide comments for line one so we have this bubble shaped icon which says line comments and for each of these lines we have its individual icon so let's click on this icon for line one and it will open the comments section similar to how we saw the comments section for header so let's provide one comment for this line and as discussed earlier we have the options to make this comment visible to the supplier or show it at the receipt or make it visible at the voucher similarly we can add multiple comments with the help of this plus button so let's click on ok and now if we compare this icon we are having some dots inside this bubble icon which says the line has a comment on the other hand we have the bubble without the dots in it which says the line does not have comments so we talked about lines now let's talk about the schedules so we discussed that each line can have one or more schedule so if we want to access the schedule we need to click on this icon which has some red color in it and also has a clock like icon inside it it indicates that it is a schedule for this line so if we click on it then we have this schedule page available so as discussed earlier this is for line one and each line can have one or more schedules so the purpose of schedule is to mention where do you want the goods or services to be delivered and when do you want them to be delivered now we have the option here for due date and we can provide some due date for the required items for example let's say we want these quantities on 20 of july then we can provide this due date now we can create multiple schedules for example for line one we are ordering five quantity of this item but let's say we want two quantities of this item delivered to a particular location and one quantity to some other location and the remaining two quantities to a different location well we can achieve this with the help of creating multiple schedules so let's add two more schedules for this line so let's say we want to add two more schedules so let's adjust the quantity as per the requirement so we have a total quantity of five for line one so let's say we want two quantities at this location we want one quantity at a different location let's provide the location and let's say we want the remaining two quantities to another location all right and let's provide the due date as well so this is the purpose of schedule 
in which you can address the delivery location as well as delivery time. So one important thing to notice is that the total quantity that we are creating across the schedule should match with the quantity that we have for the line. So that's about schedule for a given line. So let's talk about the distributions. We discuss that each schedule can have one or more distributions. So if we want to access the distributions, we can click on this icon which has three outgoing arrows and it says distributions. Remember, this is line one. For line one, we have three different schedules. We have scale ID one, two and three. And for each schedule, we have their own individual distributions. So let's go to the distribution of line one. And this is the distribution we have for line one. So the purpose of distribution is to create the bifurcation for your expenses. For example, this is line one, schedule one, and the amount is $50. So we had five quantities, but for schedule one, we only have two quantities. And that's why the amount is $50. So on the schedule, we have multiple chart fields such as account, operating unit, fund, department, program, class, etc. So these are the delivered chart field for PeopleSoft which allows us to create bifurcation for our expense. So in our case, we are saying that 100% of the expense is getting charged on account 131000 and department 11000. So we can create multiple bifurcation by adding more lines to the distribution. So let's say we want this expense to get divided into two parts. In that case, we can add one more line for distribution and we can say that 50% of the amount goes to this account and this department and remaining 50% amount goes to a different department for the same account. So let's select a different department and let's say the department is public affairs. So in this way, we can create the bifurcation of our expense as per the requirement. In our case, $25 will be charged to this account and this department and the remaining $25 will be charged to this account and this different department. So that's about the distributions. We have multiple chart fields available as we can see and these chart fill combinations are set up into system. So based upon these combinations, we can use only the valid chart fill combinations which are set up in the system. So that's about the distributions. So let's click on OK. We can also add the ship to comments similar to how we added the comments for header and for line. So let's go back to main page. Now there are multiple ways to add the items for our requisition in this component. So we added the item with the help of these search options. But if we look here, we have multiple options to add the item. First is the purchasing kit. So purchasing kit is the set of combination of items in which the item and their quantities are already set up. For example, let's search for the existing purchasing kit. So we have this campers kit. So let's select campers kit and let's say we want two quantities of this kit. So if we click on OK, then we can see we have these many items added from line number four to line number nine. and these are part of the purchasing kit. So as we have selected two quantities for campers kit, we have some items with quantity as two. For these items, the original quantity was one per camper kit. And we have this item with quantity four. And for this item, the original quantity in one camper kit is two. 
So this is another good way to add a collection of items. So we can configure or we can see the existing purchasing kit. So we need to go to items, define items and attributes and purchasing kit definition. So let's search for the existing kit and let's see this camper's kit. So we have six items. Let's click on view all. So these six items are part of the kit and as we discussed, these are the quantities. Another way to search for the items while creating requisitions is with the help of this catalog option. So these are the hosted catalogs which are configured in your PeopleSoft system. So let's say we have selected the catalog as all purchase items. So if we click on this retrieve items button, it will show all the items which are part of this all purchase items catalog. So for now, we have 50 items which are part of this catalog. So let's say from this catalog, we want to add this item to our requisition. So we can select it. We can place the quantity. So let's say we need three of these items then we can click on order. So it will add that item to our lines section. Similarly, we can search for other catalogs. So if we click on this search icon, these are some of the other catalogs which are configured in our system. So let's say we want some hardware items. So let's click on the retrieve. So we have five items which are set up in the hardware section. So let's say we want this item and this item as well. So let's provide the quantities and let's click on order. So in this way, we can add these two items. So we have 10 lines here, but the two lines that we just added, we can see it here. So we have these two items which we ordered from the hardware catalog. So the third option which we can use to add items to our requisition is with the help of these item search. So here we have far more flexibility to search for a given item. So we can search with item ID, we can search with its description, family and so many options we can use to perform a search operation. And this is useful. For example, I do not know the item ID, but I want to order a monitor. So let's say I search with monitor. Then we have multiple items which matches our description. So we have 11 of these items available. Let's click on view all. So this way we can search for our required item. So let's say we want to order this item. So let's select it here. So as soon as we click on the item, it gets added to our lines of the requisition. So let's provide some quantity for this item and let's click on refresh. We have one more option to quickly add items to our requisition and that is requester items. So requester items basically contains the history of the item which you have previously ordered. So these are the 85 items which Kenneth, which is VP1, has previously created a requisition for. So as a requester, whenever you create a requisition for a new item for the first time, then that items gets added to this requester favorite items. So next time, if you want to reorder this item, then instead of searching for the item in multiple places, you can simply come to this requester's favorite item option. You can select the item you want. For example, let's say we need this item. So you can select this and you can add this to our requisition. So these are the various ways using which we can add our item to the requisition. So now let's say that we are done with adding the required items or services for our requisition. 
So this is the total amount which will be generated for our requisition. And let's say we want to create a requisition for these items and services. Remember, the requisition ID is still next. That means the requisition is not yet created. So let's click on the save button. So now after clicking on save buttons, if there are any errors or there are any incorrect value at the schedule level, at the distribution level, then the system will show these errors and we need to fix them. If there are no errors, only then the system will create a requisition ID for our request. So let's click on the save button. And now, as we discussed, we got a message saying a quantity is required for line 40. So as we saw, the system fires all the validations for all the lines, schedules and distribution when we click on the save button. So let's go to line 14 and we have the quantity as zero. So let's provide some quantity. Let's click on refresh and let's try to save the requisition. And now we can see that a requisition ID has been generated successfully for our requisition. And the status is pending because the requisition is pending for approval. Now I am trying to create another requisition to explain the concept of requisition defaults. So let's say I have added this item 10002 and given some quantity to create a requisition. Now for my requisition defaults for a VP1, I have mentioned the account to use its 600020. Now from where this value is coming, it is coming from the requester setup of VP1. You can see this is a requester setup and the chart field account I have given is as 600020. But if I go to the distribution of this item, we can see the account is showing up as 131000, so which is a different account. So we need to understand from where this value is coming. Well, for this item, this account is coming from the item setup itself. So this is the item 10002, and if we check in the purchasing attributes, then in the chart fields, we have this account setup. And from here, this value is coming into our distribution. So what if we want the system while creating requisitions to use the requested default accounts instead of the item setup account? Well, we can do that. So let's return to main page and let's go to requisition defaults. So here we are selecting the option as a default which means if the value is coming from somewhere else, for example, for account, the value is coming from item setup. In that case, only those value will be used and we will not use the requester setup account. Hence, this is the reason the system is using this account instead of this account. But what if we want the system to strictly use only those values which are set up at the requester setup. For example, for VP1, we have set up the account as 600020, which we can see here. And we want the system to strictly use these default values. In that case, we can go with the override option. So let's click on override option. And this option will override all the values with our default requester setup values. So we have selected it as override. Let's click on OK. Now, while selecting the override options, we need to select all the lines and all the entities for which we need to override our default values. So let's select all of them. So let's click on OK. So let's click on refresh. Now let's go to the schedule and let's go to distribution. Now, if you see, we are no longer seeing the 
131000 account but rather we are seeing the account information which is set up at the requester setup so this is how we can use the requisition default option to set up the default values while creating requisition so we have created the requisition successfully now let's see what are the database tables which are impacted when we create the requisition so as we have discussed earlier each requisition has these four sections so we have header line schedule and distribution so when it comes to database table for requisition each of these sections has their own individual table for example for header we have ps rec header table which stores the header information for line we have the ps rec line table which stores all the line information for a given requisition for schedule we have the ps rec line ship table which stores all the schedules information for a given requisition and for distribution we have the ps rec line distrib table all right so now let's see these four tables for the requisition that we have created so this is the header record for our requisition so let's query this header record with our business unit and requisition id and as expected we will have one row of data so this is our requisition id and this is our requisition name so few important flags in this table are the requisition status currently it says p that means it is pending for approval once it is approved the value will be updated from p to a next we have hold status so we did not put the requisition on hold so it has a value of n and the requisition was created on this date so we also have some important parameters such as the origin transactions so as we have discussed earlier in peoplesoft system we can create online requisitions through e procurement or through purchasing so since we have created the requisitions through purchasing module using the add update requisition component we are having the origin transaction value as req so let me show you the xlat values for this field so if we query the xlat table then we get two options req is the options for our requisitions and it means it is a purchasing requisition on the other hand if we have created a requisitions through e procurement module in that case we will have the value as epo the header record also contains some key information such as what is the origin of the requisition who is the requester id what is the requisition enter date etc so this is the header table next we have is the requisition line table so let's query this table for our given business unit and requisition id so we can see we have 14 lines this is because we have 14 different items which are a part of our requisition for each requisition we have the line number which is here and we have the respective item quantity in this field so this table contains all the informations which is stored at the line level such as the item their quantities their categories their supplier their unit of measure their currency etc so all such information is available in the requisition line table now one important flag in this table is the line type so as we can see majority of the line types are cat and we have one line which says the line type as sr and for this line if you notice we do not have the item id this is because remember we created line 3 as a description only item so let's see the xlat values for this line type so if we query the xlat table for this line type we can see we have these many different types of lines available 
So these are the different ways using which we can add the item for our requisition. So next we have is the PS recline ship table, which is the table for these schedules. So let's query this table and we can see all the schedules which are part of this requisition. Now, one important thing to note is that we had 14 lines, but now we have 16 schedules here. This is because if you remember for line number one, we have three schedules. So this is why we are having total of 16 schedules because each line can have one or more schedules. So this table will contain all the scheduling information such as ship to ID, what is the base price, what is the currency, what is the attention to flag, etc. All this schedule related information will be available in this table. And the last table we have is the requisition line descript table. So let's query this table. And here we are having 17 distributions for our requisition. So remember for schedule one, we had two different distributions available. So all of the distribution related information for our given requisition will be available in this distribution table. So apart from these four main tables, there are few additional tables which are used to store the requisition comments. For example, this is the PS underscore REQ underscore comments table. So let's query this table with given business unit and requisition ID. So if we query this table, we are getting two rows of data. And if we scroll to the right, we are having a field called as comment type. For one of the row, it says HDR for header. And for other row, it says LIN to indicate it's a line. So remember, we had set up one comment for a header and for one of the line of the requisition, we have given the comment. So this table stores the data about the comments which we have given, but the actual comments are not present in this table. If you want to see the actual comments which we have given to the header and line of this requisition, then we need to use the table called as ps underscore comments underscore table which is the delivered table by peoplesoft system so we will join this table to our ps rec comments table with the help of comment id and let's provide the business unit and requisition id and let's run this query so if we run this query we will have the actual comments so if you remember this is my first requisition is the comment which we had given at the header level and this was the comment which we had given at the line level for first line of the requisition so these are some important tables which you should consider while working with requisitions all right guys that's it for today's episode if you found this content helpful then please like this video so in this episode we have created a requisition and we have submitted the requisition for approval in the next episode we will see how to approve the requisitions in peoplesoft system see you in the next episode thank you